I did one semester of statistics back in the 60s. <laughs> and, and so I'm sort of qualified. Uh, uh, but more of an amateur. And then I, I did medicine, and I went into epidemiology and public health. And I spent my life doing field survey epidemiology in rural Africa and became professor of international health at Karolinska Institute. And there I got uh, appalled by the way development statistics were used. And, and um, the title that you convinced me to put, and I, I, I'm still worrying whether I'm the beauty or the beast, when we, <laughs> when, we, when we arrived to the railway station here in Jork, we were met with this very popular book, obviously, which was The, the, the Vicious Vikings, it said that. So, so probably we should, be the <laughs> we should be the beast, but I intend to be the beauty today. Uh, uh, how do we organize the data? We have data in databases. United Nations have them for the world, since I teach mainly on global development. That's my interest. National uh, agencies have m much, much bigger databases, but also universities and other non-governmental organizations have databases. And they are hidden down in the soil, like gold in a mine. And up there is the public, and they have the internet. And some small web pages are made like that. Uh, and the web pages are linked to the databases, but in the past, too often there have been charges, terrible passwords, <laughs> and very boring statistics. Yeah. <laughs> this is the beast. Uh, the beast are the numbers, you know. It appears as if it is a beast, but we know the value which is in it. We know that inside that is the beauty. And when we, when we started a, a strategically non-profit foundation to improve the animation of this, I did it together with my son and his wife, who dropped out of university and started to write code uh, in Flash to animate statistics. We, we had a very bad uh, saying in the beginning. We said that we would convert boring statistics into beautiful graphics. But then we were thinking, and after a time we realized, and we changed it, and we said we are, con we are unveiling the beauty of statistics with new technology. Because the beauty is already there. Because what we actually have, which is perceived as a beast, is this. But this is very beautiful, isn't it? It's Nocturne in B minor by Chopin. But very few of you can appreciate it by reading the notes, isn't it? But it is, and very, very few, the composers and musicians like this, they can look at the notes and say, oh, this is very beautiful. Huh? Because they have the capacity directly to convert the written graphics into music in their head, which many of you have if you just see some time series. You know, in an Excel sheet, you can see, oh, this is fantastic. What a discovery. Look what has happened here. Huh? You don't even have to run it in SPSS. You can see it directly because you spent your life in it, you know, and you have that ability in your head. But most people need an instrument, you know. And, 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 and what it is is that those who are skilled to make the instrument is very often not the same people that are skilled to compose. And it's not enough with, with, a, with a composer and an instrument. That was in the past. When, what, what were these called? The organs, which you went like this. What is it called in English? Oh, yeah. Huh? yeah? Barrel organ, yeah? You went like that. Was, that was the instrument and just one song inside it. What we want are players yeah? who can play this statistic. Yeah? And I'm not, not talking about analysis, the scientific part of statistics, which I've done in my life in epidemiology, you know, when, when we use the, the different statistical programs and we get our parameters and so on. But I'm talking about more communicating for a wider audience. And I think we are in a need to distinguish between the composing part of it, the construction of the con technology, and the playing of it. That's how we can get the beauty out of it, the beauty of the notes which Chopin wrote. Eh? The beauty is inside the notes, but they have to be get appreciated. And now people can make new technologies, which is amazingly cheap and effective and actually very beautiful. And the kids can get their own, you know. They were not allowed to use the old technology because they could destroy it, you know. But there, there are things out there. We can put these instruments out on the internet and everyone can play if they get access to the notes. 
Eh? And, and, and actually what I'm going to talk about is the pathology of a disease affecting the statistical community, which is called database hugging. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your toothbrush and your database ain't the same thing, you know. <laughs> The toothbrush you never borrow to anyone, you know, but the database we can handle in other ways. So why did I start all this? Well, I ended up lecturing about global health for the medical students at Karolinska Institute. It's the medical university in Stockholm. And, and, and I, getting the opportunity to give a new course in the elective program, I was a little nervous and thought that those 40% of the students who took my course, maybe they knew everything. So I had to do a test when they arrived. Uh, and I did it three semesters. And this question led to a major discovery. Uh, because I asked them which country has twice the child mortality of the other. And I put the pairs together so it's very clear which one has the highest child mortality. And child mortality is mainly measured in middle and low income countries by interviewing a representative sample of 3,000 to 4,000 women about what happened in their household over the last year. This is funded by uh, USAID, a macro international is doing this together with national partners. It's high quality. And those of you who have been involved know that, that that has come out. The question is, do people know this? This data has been around, you know. Now, who is it? It's Turkey, which has the highest child mortality. It's Poland, it's Russia, it's Pakistan, and it's South Africa. But the Swedish students only had 1.8 correct answers out of five possible. And you would, my first conclusion is, wow, there's ignorance out there. My job is easy, you know. I can teach, you know. They don't know. Oh, it was a relief for me, you know. <laughs> You're always nervous when you get the teaching position, you know, that people would know everything and you, know, you, you don't know anything. So I sat down and I had done, I calculated my confidence interval. It was relatively narrow because I did, did it several semesters. I was worried about the power. And then I made my discovery that the Swedish top student with the highest grades possible knows statistically significantly less about the world than the chimpanzee. <laughs> it's interesting. Even you didn't see that, how funny it is. Because, I mean, if I had two bananas, Sri Lanka and Turkey, and served it to the chimp, you know, and they would pick one, they would have 2.5. Yeah? And how come that they are worse than random? It's because I was wrong. I was hastening in my conclusion that there was ignorance out there. There's no ignorance of the about the world. There is preconceived ideas. Preconceived ideas which has not been confronted with the data that has been meticulously collected by highly qualified professionals and compiled together in a comparable way. It has not been used. Eh? And I, I did what I've done. I've also done, besides statistics, quite a lot of anthropology. So after my lectures, when the students have their tea outside and coffee, I go out and listen, you know. And lecturing about famine and child death in the world, it always evokes a lot of discussions. And you can hear what they say out there, you know. And I realized that their textbook was this about the world. <laughs> the preconceived ideas about the world are very, very strong. Very, it's amazingly strong. And, 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 and it's like an adventure, you know, and the world is, 50 years is a very short period in changing worldviews. Huh? And, <clears throat> and I went on and listened to the students, how they discussed, and they always talked about we and them. The most common statement of the world was, they cannot live like us, that would never work. And if I provoked them, they would continue, all Chinese cannot have a car. And it's like, it's like a truth. It's not to be debated. And I was about to at least now, who, who are we and who are they? All we learned in school, it's the Western world and it's the third world. Aha, uh -huh, I said. And what are your criteria for putting countries or one or the other, other category? And relatively fast they came up. Well, you could say that Western world is long life in small family and third world is short life in large family. <laughs> okay, okay, I, fair, fair, I said, it's good because there's data on this, and we can go out and we can check it. So we developed the, the Trendalyzer program here, where we could display each country like a bubble here. This is written in flash. And the size of the bubble here, the size of the bubble, that is, uh, that is uh, the population. So the big red one is China, and this one blue one here is India, and the color then is, is the continent. Africa, south of the Sahara, fertility rate, 
large family, short life. This is life expectancy, 30, 50, 70 years, huh? how long you live. And, and uh, Middle East, almost all countries have, have uh, sorry, that was not Middle East, is there? Large family, short life, what are these, the exceptions? Very nice with these flash interfaces. You just point on them and you get the information. Huh? Mal Malta, okay, they were better. South Asia, same, Pacific, or some countries blinking up here, New Zealand, Australia, and Japan, the rest, large family, short life. And this is Latin America and North America, so it's Canada and US up here, actually Argentina there, because the students were right. The Western countries were up there, and the third world was there, but that was 1950. It's even pre-Tintin, you know. <laughs> now the question is, what has happened? Do you have a fact-based worldview? Because these are really the basic of social life, isn't it? The size of family and the length of life. What more important variables could we pick? And we know what this is, what we measure with fertility. We peep into the bedroom huh? and we see, is it old male biological sexuality and you get as many kids as you get or is it soft pillow talk where man and a husband, uh, husband and wife uh, ask each other, should we have two or three kids? Should they have shoes? Should they go to school? Should we go to the sea on holiday? Huh? Developing countries were over here. The big discussion was, will they ever learn to control their sexuality? You know, this uncivilized, will this ever happen? You know, is it worth with technology? Western world will always be different. What has happened? Try to imagine how the world looks like today, because now we can animate it and we can gradually move from 1950, 51, 52. Can you see China is moving? Mao Zedong is bringing a longer life to them. And the Latin American countries don't care about the Pope. They start with family planning. China goes down with fewer children. India moves on. Bangladesh follows. Here, the African countries fall down in HIV. And you can see when we come into this new century, that's where we are today. And this is actually the projection for 2008. And this is where people want to live, isn't it? Huh? Two children and a long life. The simple aim of human development is to replace the funerals of the young with the funerals of the old. Huh? <laughs> well, it, 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 it's, it's very straightforward. Everyone would agree that's a very, very, very honorable aim. Huh? <clears throat> now, Many people are surprised about this. And, and fertility rate actually is one of the highest validity data. Because in a survey, you go to a remote part of, of, of Tanzania, you know, you knock the door on the house, the door opens, the kids come out, you count one, two, three, four. It's very easy to get fertility rate. We have very solid data on fertility rate. Life expectancy is much wider uncertainty range. And, and what we are waiting for, for public statistic for the poorer part of the world to have the concept of uncertainty range developed. Instead of saying, is it valid or not valid statistic? And confidence interval is not enough. For instance, for Sudan, how should we handle the fact of Darfur and parts of Sudan? Nigeria was not complete census in the north, you know. We need some judgment for uncertain. This is emerging. But we know that this pattern is more or less correct. I could make some, some, some uh, uh, interesting comparison here. If we would pick, uh, that was Ukraine. Uh, I wanted to pick United Kingdom. Huh? The whole idea we had was not to have a drop-down menu. Huh? Uh, me and my children, we always played computer games. Huh? I, I, I like that. And, and we found out very early that there was no point of going to university to learn how to do animated graphics. Remember that. Never hire anyone with university training. Someone, <laughs> someone who has developed computer games. And in Britain, you have such a lot of skill in computer gaming. Huh? So, so, so if you can get that skill into statistics, a lot of things can happen. United Kingdom was there. Huh? Uh, and, and we would like to compare United Kingdom. What should we, what should we pick? We pick Indonesia. 1961, Indonesia. 1961, United Kingdom, uh, Western country, third world country. And here we go. Uh, 
and we should see uh, what really has happened between these two countries. And you can see the amazing effect. The imams are quite more actively at the same development level for family planning than the priests of the Anglican Church ever were. You know? <laughs> and, and where we are today is that Indonesia has about the same level of development when it comes to length of life and size of family as United Kingdom had about 1972. Were you aware of that? That Indonesia today is Britain 19, 1972. You see, we haven't realized the extent of change in Asia. We just know that Asia is changing, but we haven't realized that Asia today, large part of Asia, is developing twice to three times as fast as West Europe ever did. And they're catching up, and they're catching up socially on the human side much faster than the economic side. And then we say, oh, it's an economic boom. The students talk about the economic booms, and, and these uneducated chi uh, Chinese labor are working so hard for low salary. China and India are producing a higher number of chemical and physical engineers in the next decade than West Europe and North America together. We are all, we are tinted, we are one to two generations behind in understanding what happens in, in Asia. And you can show it like this. Huh? I remember uh, lecturing in, uh, in the United States when I showed the difference. I, I went to 19, when was it started, the war between Vietnam and United States, 19. 66 here and United States up there and, and you could take away the rest and you could see what has happened in Vietnam, you know. And I said that Vietnam today has the same length of life and health of family and they have good data, they have good professionals which are collecting this data, you know. Human rights and democracy you can discuss in Vietnam but when it comes to measuring this, it's it high validity. So Vietnam today has the same health situation the same family size as United States 1974 at the end of the war. And I had Al Gore up on the stage and he said very frankly, I didn't have the slightest idea. I wasn't even close of realizing that. That's after being vice president and one of the more intellectual <laughs> leaders of that country <laughs> for a long time. Huh? And that's probably why he admitted it so frankly and openly. Huh? So, so, so uh, there is a lot of data out there, and we have found that this is very powerful, these small animations and the way we can present it. And we have actually two target groups, two main target groups, which really love it, and it's children below 12 and heads of state. <laughs> because both of them, you only have six seconds to get their attention. <laughs> and they never want to be told how things are. They want to draw their own conclusions from what they see. Uh, and uh, now, how, how is the world? But the students say, well, you say, uh, the students, you said, I tell the students, you said they cannot live like us. But they already do. They already do. They have a small family. You know? They have pillow talk. They decide softly in the bedroom how life should be. And they live for 70 years. It, they already living. Oh, but you know, um, the gap in economy between the rich and the poor just get wider. By the way, we owe the name of our foundation to London Underground, Mind the Gap. You know, which, <laughs> so we realized there's a need for gap minders. You know, so we called it the Gap Minder Foundation. You know, and the idea is to to, to realize are there difference, are there not difference? How do they work? So we display this as a way. This is a sort of freehand animation of income distribution of the world. That person earns $10. It's purchasing power dollar. And then we ask uh, more persons to come down. It's very difficult to explain a distribution here if we don't use animation. You, now you can see that all persons come down and they stand on their daily income and they create the distribution like this. You wouldn't need this because you can read these graphs but we can reach a much wider audience like this. It's immediately obvious that it's people that way and it's dollar that way. And you have an animation where there's a hump, but there's no gap. There's no gap, there's no Grand Canyon in income. Yeah? And we can also show here how the money is distributed. 100% of the daily income of the world, the 20% <coughs> richest in the world, they get, when thunder strikes, 74%, and the 20% poorest get uh, about 2%. And this is not 
I mean, it looks like a little Donald Duck cartoon, but it's the absolute best data set of Yuri Dikanov, who are put together at the World Bank. All the, the, the interviews with two to 4,000 households in the different countries. And that's why we can't, it's only done every fifth year. So we can't give a, a complete global data set more than five years ago like this. Uh, and this is also, well, this is a visualization, but doing it a little like animation like this make people realize it in a new way. And, and, and it shows that half mankind is here between starvation and welfare. They have left starvation, but they still don't have welfare. Huh? And, and you can show, uh, we wanted to show the different continents. And we had a problem on how to stack different subgroups in a distribution like that. And we found out that if we let them fall down like that, you realize that was Africa. How can we show that the next one is on top? Well, by falling down like that, it's obviously that it puts itself on top. And then that's Latin America. Every income in the world you can find in Latin America. Eh? It's a green anaconda. And, and former East Europe, former Soviet empire is almost the same today. And that's East and Southeast Asia, and that's South Asia. And now everyone realizes that these are additional to each other. They're not standing behind each other. And we can now go backwards. You see, we try to morph. We found out that you have to morph one image. You should never jump too much. Eh? Here we are jumping back in time. But then we go forward from 1907 like this. And you can see our population is growing, and our income is going forward like this. Can you see how East Europe slides backwards in income huh? and, and, flat, and becomes Latin America-like? And then by, by animation, you can have very nicely, you can run it like this, and you can see how the world is doing. Halfway through this work, we, we found out that there was an opportunity to run a consultancy service about the impact on equity by globalization. And we could produce ratios for the neoliberals, which show that the world is getting better and juster, and for the leftish uh, anti-globalization people, that it gets worse. You can always create ratios, you know, eh? <laughs> by dividing, or you take log transformation or not. You, know? you can always provide it for, for, for the advocacy purpose that, that you have. But in animation, it's interesting. Here, every family's report in the survey is there. And it's not so much, you, you are not tricking it so much, actually. Eh? You can, and it's quite educational to see how it is. This is the pro, uh, projection, of course, by the World Bank here for, for the future, what will happen. And what comes out, the conclusion is that m these people now that, where, where are we today? We're more or less, more or less there. Yeah? That the big bulk of population in the world, they are about on two to three dollars today. That means that they have food and they have shelter. Yeah? And they have some for, so, uh, uh, form of schooling. But one generation ago, when I was teaching global health, I said that poverty caused disease. Today, I say that disease caused poverty. The most common reason for a family falling back here is that they have been struck by disease. And, and they are educated, and they pay for the health service to get back. And, and um, the, 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 the very striking pattern is that we have more or less the same amount of people in, in poverty. The proportion in poverty is, is being reduced, but we still have this one to two billion people in absolute poverty in the world. Well, that's one way of showing it. I would like to, to show you how, how you also an example of morphing when we would like to change the dollar per day to GDP here per capita. And we take that one and we form a, eh? that's quite nice, you know. And you have gained people's understanding for one way of showing it. And then Latin America comes and the size now is the, still the size of the population, eh? because it was the size of the population before. And that's Africa south of the Sahara. And now the Arab states decide to form their own bubble together with the Asian Arab states. And they jump down there. And we have sub-Saharan Africa, which is slightly worse off than the whole of Africa, but not so much, actually. And then uh, we can expand it like this. And we can put in an axis for health, you know. Money going that way and child survival going that way. I found when you communicate child mortality, it's very bad if you say mortality. People don't like it. And they hear mortality, oh, mortality in itself is bad. 
doesn't matter if it's four or 40, it's just bad that children are dying. Child survival is positive. And child su so we, we reverse the axis, you know. We put child survival there, actually child mortality is just the other way around like this. It's quite in, in this, what you can do in flash. You can, you can very easily transform, you can show it, and you, you can ask yourself, why, why do we put this on a log scale? Well, you can explain here. And you can hide explanation inside the flash presentation. But it takes some time to do. This is hand, handcraft. Eh? You make the, these presentations. Eh? And, and, and look here, we have Sub-Saharan Africa. Well, we know that Sub-Saharan Africa is worse, the student tell me. They are poor and they, they are sick, you know. South Asia, a little better. Then they get surprised to find that East Europe, Latin America, Arab states, and East uh, Asia is about the same. And OECD is here. Oh, there's a gap, they say. Look, we told you, there is a gap here. Oh, wait and see, I say. I, now, I, 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 will now, I will now do the following. I will take and I will split. S oh, pop, 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 pop. I was too fast here. Here. We have South, I, I, I hatch, and now I split Sub-Saharan Africa. Huh? You see Sierra Leone and Mauritius, the big difference within Sub-Saharan Africa, you know. Here, Medicine Sans Frontier should do their job. Here, DFID should do their job. Here, you could, should put your pension funds. And if you haven't bought property in Mauritius, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> so, and now we split the next. And look, when we split here, you, know, you, have to, you have to design the movement also. If you want to do animation, it's not only the graphics you have to design. You have to design the movement. And when you split the Arab states, people think they are similar, same culture, same climate. Do you see how they land, you know? They, 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 this is a work. This is several days' work to have the right speed of it working like this. When you put it on the internet or computer, you shouldn't use a program that uses the graphic ca card on the computer because then you will get different speeds and, and the mind will read them differently. And here is now East Asia. The big bubble will, of course, be China there. Uh -huh. And we found that bursting, you know, because it becomes more more exciting, the Cambodia is there and Singapore is there. Yeah. It's sort of sad for the Swedes. We used to be very proud. We said Sweden has the best child survival in the world. No longer. Singapore is the leading today. Yeah. Singapore has, has much lower uh, child mortality than Britain and Sweden today. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, that's good statistic. And there's no, they, they are just very great in taking care of their kids. Uh, Tajikistan, Slovenia, this is the difference between uh, East Europe. So you see, you can't have third world and Western countries. You can't even have regions and say, this is how, how the former Soviet empire is. This is how Arab states is. Huh? I used to compare with my neighbor. I have this neighbor who know, he knows about 200 types of wine. <laughs> he knows the name of the grape, you know, the temperature they should have, the food they go with, you know, exactly the taste. And I'm that sort of person. I only know two types of wine. I noted that there is red and there is white. <laughs> <laughs> I never paid any attention to it. So I'm not interested in it. Yeah? But my neighbor only knows two types of countries, Western countries and third world. <laughs> and I know 200. <laughs> not, I know the uh, GDP. I know the child survival. I know the literacy rate. I know the, the religion and so on. You know? And that's about how we have to know the world. You know? And you can see there the differences there. And when I've split the countries, there is almost there is almost no, no um, uh, gap any longer. It's a continuous world. It's tin tin to talk about developing countries. It's gone. So where did I lecture last night in London? Who were the ones who were most eager to listen to me? I had all the hedge fund managers in London last night. Yeah. And that's very strange. Then something is wrong is in this world. If it's a professor of public health from Sweden who go to London to lecture for hedge fund manager, then something has been wrong in how we handle statistics. Eh? Eh, because it has been inefficient. Yeah? So how could, we, how, could we, how could we be able to show statistics in, in a much more forceful way? Of course, showing national average is very, very dangerous. You know. And you, you need to be able to split Brazil here. And when I split Brazil into the richest 20% and the poorest 20%, you see the poorest 20% is there. Yeah? And, and, and I can split South Africa. And I can split Uganda. 
and two African countries, and you have the whole world. And then you want to discuss how, what policies should there be for health service in Africa. The whole world is there in just two countries. Huh? And if I, if I add, add Niger, there's always things which shouldn't be in the world. <laughs> huh? And we know why. Niger makes great cotton. And why are there five billion US dollars in cotton subsidies, which they have to face uh, when they are selling their cotton? There's other wrongs with agricultural policy in Africa, but this is very, very strange. You know, and The size of, of, of this money and what's happening in the world should be able to show, able to show in, a much, in a much better way. Um, uh, you can also, of course, run around the world like this. You know, This is 1960. Ooh, 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 ooh. There and there, and uh, and uh, I can run the world here. Huh? You can see Mao Zedong is improving the health in China, and he dies there. He dies, and now Deng Xiaoping makes money. You know. <laughs> And it's quite interesting how you can, how you can, uh, this is where the hedge fund manager got really excited. He said, ah, I want to see Malaysia, they said, I want to see Malaysia. Huh? Huh? Because we invested in Malaysia too late. Huh? And here you can see, we are Brazil against Malaysia. 1960, Brazil was richer, but Malaysia was healthier. Huh? Let's see the, the, the impact of that. Huh? Or we can, we can do this, let me go back. Let me, let me go back there, and I draw trails. So, and this is Samba, isn't it, you know? Brazil go like this, whereas Malaysia go very, very steady. Huh? Up to the Asian crisis, which is there. Huh? But this was quite short. And you can see how fast they have moved. It's also interesting if you compare the track of Sweden and Singapore. You see what can be done. And it's very important that we show time series statistics. Often we do our analysis, we look at, we, we found out that the ability of showing the whole world at the same time gives another impression. You know. So what is needed to get the data out and get it wider used down there? We already have the design tools. And I don't think it will be solved by Oracle or SPS as providing everything from the database up to the design tools. We need to have the data to flow through several technologies and several software. And our idea with Gapminder was just to provide the link between this sort of things. We're actually used, we would never ever have achieved this if Macromedia hasn't given us director and flash. Well, it didn't give us, we had to pay for it, but relatively cheap. <laughs> relatively cheap it was. Huh? And, and, and uh, uh, we, could, we could develop these ones. We did, we animated. Some of are used here. We, we put um, hard, um, we put one little data set inside, inside a, a flash technology. We work with UN Statistics Division to put out a major data set. But then we very soon realized that what we need is a search function. We can search the web today, but we can't search in the databases because someone is hugging them and putting them in the hidden web. <laughs> huh? So we cannot see them. And then they, it's just shown selectively. Or you can, when it's free statistics, you know, means that you can put the arm in the brief and you can take up, out one time series. And then you put in the arm and you take out another time series. Yeah? We would like to see this happen. We would like to see the great work being done of official statistics down here. 20 billion US dollars per year. The production of all public statistics. Everyone is surprised about it. It's a huge sector. Yeah? And we don't hear so much about it, because what I found out, it's very haphazardly how statistical agencies get their budgets. It's a major problem I've identified. Eh? Because it's very often not due to the internal work or proposals or ideas that they can generate or secure their budgets. It all happens outside there, politically. Eh? And this is a problem. But it's great value, fantastic things here. And we should have the new technology. And we need competing technologies here, different sort of kinds. And we definitely need to get out into TV. Just think about the metrologists. They collect all these data points. They process them. And then they are out in TV every evening, every evening. Eh? And it's the professional metrologist which shows it. 
We need the statisticians there also. Eh? We, we need to, to get this out and, and, and to be able to, to, to make this happen. And the, the crucial thing we found is public access to data. The most difficult for the seven years we worked with Gapminder, we had about five to six person in the team in developing these flash technologies, was not to get the money. The corresponding to DFID, CEDA in Sweden, funded us modestly, but, 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 but uh, and not regularly, but, but in a good way. That was not the, the problem. The problem to find young programmers was not uh, the problem. I used child labor. It's a very good way. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic mean of production. I can strongly recommend it. Huh? Uh, and and uh, you would never have invited me here if I haven't applied child labor. Huh? And, and, uh, and, and, and we had ideas. But to get access to a tax-funded database which we could experiment with was almost impossible. I was invited to the king, I was invited to the prime minister, to United Nations, and to the World Economic Forum in Davos before I was invited to Statistics Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's, it, innovation doesn't take place very strongly. There are some exceptions. There are some exceptions wh where we see it's not capability of people which is lacking, but it's not, it's not happening in, in, the way, in the fast way that the internet is moving forward. So we need some, some new things to happen. And this is what I think will happen. Huh? We have microdata down here, which researchers can access with ethical permission. It is processed up by professionals to indicators here, well-defined indicators. And they are put in data warehouse, and they are out on web 1.0, which is a digital version of the yearbook, more or less innovative. Huh? And then it goes out to the public. This is how it was just some years ago. But now the technology producers are here. Swivel is a commercial startup in San Francisco. Mapping World is a, a publicly funded innovation uh, unit in uh, the Netherlands. Many ICs, IBM's visualization tool, and Google acquired our software in March this year. And my son and, and, and his wife and our three developers are now a project team in Mountain View with Google. And they get a very good environment there. And Google has decided to scale it up and provide it free of charge for public statistics that they've committed on their web page and in, in our contract. So things will happen. But how is the data going to go into here where the innovations take place? I don't say that innovation doesn't take place up there. Eh? But we need both this possibility. And here we don't have the problem with the music or the films. Or, 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 or the books where there's intellectual property. This is tax-funded stuff. This is already tax-funded stuff which is inside the databases. Is it that the public are going to go and pick it from the statistical agency, and then they are going to put it into there? And they will put it upside down, you know? And it will get messy. Or is it the researchers which will make an outlet there, which doesn't break the ethical rules? Or will we? And this is the most decisive. If this happens, which I'm showing you now, things will go very speedy. Will it take? Yeah. We will find a way of making the databases accessible here. Will these technologies be able to copy the database of Statistics Sweden every Friday night? Oh, no, they can't copy our data. What are they doing with your home pages? What is Yahoo? And, 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 and Google doing. They are copying them every night. They are going into every PDF you are putting up. And they are reading the PDF. They are transferring it into searchable letters and numbers. Eh? And they put it up. And that's what they are doing every night. And you are just happy and proud about it. Because you get visitors. You get visitors. And you know the Belgium newspapers got angry when Google made this news machine. And they said, you are not allowed to copy our articles. And they took them to court in Brussels. And they won. And Google said, we apologize. We will take away all Belgium newspapers from Google News. Just took one week until they could like, how stupid we were. <laughs> how could we be so stupid? <laughs> now we lost all these readers. <laughs> because they actually, I mean, it has to be, and it's not an easy. This is not easy. And I don't say it's natural. It should be done like this or like that. But there's a great potential which will benefit the public if this will happen. 
And the interesting thing is that it's not one, it's several companies, small and big, which is doing this at the same time. And it's good for statistics. It's good for statistics because more, more things are happening there. Our foundation, Gapminder, we are going to make use of what is produced here to go one step further, and we are going to make films out of this, that weather report. And we're going to make videos, and we put it on YouTube. Because today I don't have to go and argue with BBC and Swedish television. Please give me some minutes. Do this, do that. No, I just put it up on YouTube. Huh? How much does it cost to invest in a TV studio with all the cameras, the computers, and the screen, you know, the green screen or the, this chroma key techniques? 10,000 pounds. That's it. Very cheap. And you can produce you can produce animated statistics. And then we can get out. We'll see how it works. This morning I spoke with the economists in London, and they were very keen to have this function up on their web page. And our idea is that this should reproduce a lot. A good statistic analysis, of course, with the conventional, well-developed methods we have, comes to a conclusion. And then we can illustrate it by also making a video. Eh? or something which can, which can go into a TV program. I'm doing a survey in the world, and I did it in York today and London yesterday. And I found that the sidewalk are mostly free. This is when I'm coming up of the tube station in Wall Street. I have my American Express card there. I am convinced that I will have to pay to walk the sidewalks on Wall Street. But it's tax funded all the way up to the entrance of the New York Stock Exchange. Why are, the, why are the sidewalks free? Because it's the crucial part of the urban construct that ta sidewalks are tax funded. It doesn't make sense to charge individual users. When it doesn't cost anything for one more user, you don't have to charge. In London with the traffic and in Stockholm we have to charge for the cars because we need to regulate, not to recover the money, but we need to regulate. Why we don't need to regulate and where it doesn't cost more, we want more user. Why should we charge? Eh? We can have sidewalks are free, and we can make statistics the intellectual sidewalks of human societies. And I told the hedge fund manager, we'll make your life very tough. Because if what the people I'm going to meet to joke tomorrow, if their work is getting out there to benefit the public, they won't make the mistake that you earned all your money on. Because that's what the, the hedge fund are earning their money. It's because people are making mistakes. Eh? And, 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 and they cannot adjust their activity, be it commercial or what it is, according to what really is taking place. And the hedge funds, they pay, what was it, 15,000 pounds a year for access to specially compiled databases, which keep them ahead of the public. Eh? So Paul Schung at United Statistic Division has been a wonderful partner in this. Uh, being professor of statistics from Singapore and the head of the National Statistic Office there, coming from Asia, he saw the new possibilities of this. And he has strongly promoted free access to, to statistics to be the strategy for the future. And if we can have him, uh, he was not at all difficult to convince. Neither was it difficult to convince Larry Page and Sergey Brim at Google. They are really great found, uh, founder of statistics. And they said, could we in any way help promoting the use by the many of the publicly funded statistics? We'll do it. It should be free. But you want to earn money? Yeah, but business model can come later. It can come later, what, what, what it will work. Yeah? So the new ITC re, uh, realities is the long tail. We can on the internet now have people with a very narrow interest to be able to share their statistics and their interest, what this is. You know? it is it's possible to, to achieve this. Wikipedia is a fantastic example, isn't it? Huh? We can create similar things here. You can sell books now on the internet that no bookshop can keep in store. Huh? This is the long tail phenomenon. The web 2.0 is that you, you merge, you blur the difference between the producer and the user. I don't think Swivel has done a great job, and, and they will have a lot of people getting interested in statistics. But with public statistics, it's, it needs to be organized. It's the unified format in providing the time series, which is the crucial thing.
a unified format with a defined, good, correct definition of what unemployment is or what, what this degree in, in education is. That is, and that's already done. It's already done by professionals. And we need a pull factor, which we haven't had. SMDX, many, many have worked with SMDX. It's a push factor. Eh? It has to exchange statistics. But the interface is out to the new technology needs. We have terabytes download. When, when, when the Google founders, they ask me, how much public statistics are there? Oh, it's a lot. I say, yeah, everyone says it's a lot, but how much? Well, the micro, no, not take away the microdata. Just the indicators, which can be free. The microdata, that has to be protected. Huh? Take the indicator. How much is that? You mean all sectors, all sectors, all countries, all times? I don't know. You don't know that? Then you can go and count, they said. So I went and got, I had to sit down and estimate. And I said, it's between 1 and 10 terabytes. Well, that's nothing, they said. And there's no problem whatsoever. Because that's less than downloading Lord of the Rings. You see, we think we're protective. There's no technological limitation for downloading for a kid on the home computer the entire database of human society's public statistic from the origin of history. And we, this, is, this is fantastic news. Huh? There's global governance. We want this world not to be managed only by governments and politicians. We want local communities to take part actively. This is going to happen very much on that. We want the global change and trends not to be dealt with by the hedge funds alone. We want the people to be there also. Huh? Animation can be done online, and user and customer is not the same thing. I was in, I was in, uh, in um, Davos in the meeting where we had uh, the moderator asked uh, Niklas uh, Sandström from Skype, how many customers you have? Huh? I have 75 millions. In how long time? In 18 months. And he turned to Bill Gates and said, have you ever grown that fast? And Bill Gates said, I thought you said customer. They should pay, he said. And then the other said, no, that's a new thing, the new business model. When we have the net and when Microsoft has created the platforms, you can have new business models where you satisfy the users and you find some other way of recovering the money for the sustainability. And in fact, those are the ones who have earned most money, are the ones who act like a public agency. Huh? And they have to gain the trust and, and the service. Huh? So dissemination has to change. We have to stop thinking in dissemination. It's a Gutenberg concept. There's still a place for the yearbook. There's still a place for the web page of the statistical agency. But it has to be one part of the access. People have to be able to access the numerical, the beauty which is in there, inside the beast. And they can show the beauty in very many ways. And we have to try to move from visualization to animation. That's when we can hit many more users out there. And if we can move into TV, that's where we have the millions and millions of users. Thank you very much.